Uh, before I um, go any further, I want to just introduce someone and then I want to read something. So I'd like to introduce Amber Dawn Lee, a, a beautiful woman from uh, Southern California. She's an actress and a comedian. And uh, Amber, just say hello to everybody. Um, hi, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Folks, Amber, uh, 30 years ago, was a child victim of a, a predatory pedophile. And uh, I came to know her many years ago. In fact, Amber, I, I often r remind you, our first meeting was actually when you were in a school in Arizona and I came to interview you about this group. Do you want to share with anyone how you uh, responded to the police when they came and asked you questions? Oh, um, I don't, you go ahead. I don't know. I, I think I told them that I followed God's law, not the law of the land. Is that right? <laughs> this, uh, this teenager, uh, basically Chris tuned me up as an investigator and set me straight and sent me on my way from Arizona. That was an awfully long flight home after talking to Amber. Oh, um, sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, uh, we we actually created a friendship over the years. And about two years ago, uh, Amber called me one night and asked me if I could speak to her about some of the abuse that she endured as oh, a part of this cult. Um, I uh, will apologize once more to this sweet woman because I wasn't ready to talk about this case back then. And I uh, politely declined and wished her the very best in getting on with her life. But I couldn't get her out of my mind. And uh, I kept going back and dusting off, you know, how you keep those case files of, of uh, major cases that you've handled. And I kept dusting it off and I'd uh, prepare myself to look into the case. And then I'd just put it away. And folks, literally, this was thousands, thousands of counts of rape of children in this case. It was uh, a terrible experience for those who were there. And it was hard on the police officers that investigated it. But uh, after a while, I uh, repented and reached back out to Amber. And we went to work in trying to locate the rest of the victims. And uh, about April or May of this year, we brought together, now keep in mind, Chris, there were 32 children that were taken into protective custody. Um, in April of this year, we brought together Amber and a bunch of the children that she hadn't seen in 30 years on a phone call for the first time. Amber, share, share what that was like for you. Well, um, it was it was pretty surreal. It was really great seeing everybody. I, it was, you know, not even five minutes in when we were all very childlike again and sharing stories and, and laughing and um, just catching up on where we are in our lives. And we kind of felt like we were like just a bunch of like sneaky little children getting to, you know, talk on a Zoom call when really we're just, you know, we're all grown up and have really moved on. So it's really been healing to reconnect with those that really understand, you know, what I've been through because they've been through it too. It, it was, it was amazing, Chris. And um, after that call, I, or I talked to, to Amber because I had a special memory and it was uh, that she had uh, had a very special thing taken from her in these cults and without revealing the thing, Amber, um, could you explain why such important, personal items were stripped of people in a cult? Um, we weren't allowed to have anything that was personal that we got from what was now the outside world. And if we had like a connection to it, if we really liked it, or it was a worldly carnal item, anything that could take your attention away from what it was that you were supposed to focus on, whether it be an object or, or even our clothing. Um, and in some cases, you know, they would change the person's name as well. So just to really kind of like strip you of anything that you care about, if you care about something, then it could be a threat to the, the leaders and the self-proclaimed prophet and other abusers that are there that want complete control over everything. 
So Amber, I, I wanted, I'm going to ask uh, Tyler to pull up a picture of you when you were a child living in that group. Oh. And uh, just because I love the look back and the hairstyles and everything oh. else. <laughs> and I want to just leave this up for a moment while I read something from my book. It was something that you shared with me. And then I want to talk about it a little. Is that okay? Sure. Yes. Go ahead. All right. So I'm going to kind of drift my eyes off so I can read this. Um, this is from uh, the book that will be coming out, uh, we believe, in November on uh, the Zion Society in this criminal case. And this is from Amber, from her uh, childhood diary. One afternoon, upon returning home, I found a package wrapped and sitting on my front porch. My sisters and I ran to see what it was. It was a beautifully wrapped present. I picked it up and we ran inside with it. My mother struck a match and lit the kerosene lamp that we had. Yes, our electricity had been turned off again. There was a small note, scotch tape to the present, and it said, to Amber from someone who loves you. She says, I was giddy. I opened it slowly and carefully. The wrapping was so much like Christmas paper, but it wasn't December. Inside the box, there was the most beautiful, handmade Raggedy Ann doll. It was laying atop decorative crinkle paper. She had black yarned hair, which I felt was just for me because I had black hair. How did this person know that I was always self-conscious about having darker hair? My sisters were blonde. I wanted to feel like I was a part of and not different from those around me. I wanted to look like my family, but I didn't. The doll looked like me. She had blue eyes. She wore a dress made out of shiny satin with an apron and even lacy bloomers underneath. I couldn't believe it. I searched the doll for a clue, but there wasn't one. Just a heart made of string on her chest. Just a simple red heart. But I still didn't know where she came from. To say I was overjoyed by her is an understatement. She was the best thing that could have possibly happened to me. Do you think my real mom left this for me? No. Do you know who it's from? No. Do you think my real mom knows where we live? No, and I'm your real mom. I, I mean, my biological mom. No, your biological mom was a drug addict. I know, I know, but, but the note said they love me. Who could it be? I don't know. Isn't it fantastic? My dad uttered as he walked out of the room. Amber says, I was smiling, laughing and crying all at once with happiness. Everything in my life in that moment felt perfect and whole. I had no idea who had given me the gift, but it was just perfect at the perfect time. I cried myself to sleep so often, but tonight I wouldn't. I held her close. Someone loved me enough to do this for me. Okay, I had never felt happier than I did in this moment. Somebody really loved me. This demonstration of kindness affected me deeply. I always felt different. I always felt lost. I always felt uncomfortable in my own skin. I had an empty space that she immediately filled. Her heart was made from cloth, thread, and the compassion of a stranger. But she came as a surprise for me. She was very special. So Amber, thanks for letting me share that. Tell people what that little doll meant to you? Um, well, that doll symbolized a lot for me. Um, she was a, a mother, father, 
She was a protector. She was my secret keeper. I was living in a very traumatic um, existence um, because of the choices of the adults around me. Um, so I found a lot of solace in that doll. And also I was, you know, with the emotional abuse that I also had, I felt very worthless and to have something that came just for me with, for no reason, it, it, it was, it, you know, just not even knowing who it could be. It, it kept me more open to somebody out there does love me. I don't know who, but somebody loves me. So if, something abusive happened to me again, instead of pulling that abuse more inside, I was able to go to my doll and be like, well, it's okay because somebody loves me. So, and you know, I cried a lot of tears into that doll and, you know, took her with me on a lot of journeys. And, and then we were, you know, in the, in the group and, um, because I had um, such an attachment to my doll and I was, you know, uh, intended to be a prophet's wife as, as a child, they took my doll away from me so that I could not have any worldly or outside um, connections. They called them uh, a carnal connection, uh, which meant that the devil was... Um, and the adversary and everything was in a uh, symbolized in my doll, which that's not what it was for me. It was quite the opposite. So that was a time when I really, you know, I, I lost a lot of faith, um, you know, went into a very deep and defiant depression. Um, 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 yeah. yeah. So Chris, from a, from a behavioral perspective, perspective if you wanted to break this little kid what are you going to do yeah i mean so thinking of the the psychology of isolation right the, these are 100 and and you know i i've got to say first of all before i even go down this lane here amber good for you for you know, empowering yourself to get to this point tonight and to get here and just to share this, uh, you know, share this story. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm riveted probably like everybody else in here. Mike did not tell me he was bringing you on here tonight, by the way. Surprise, uh, it's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> but I, so the isolation behavior of uh, sexual deviant behavior, right? These guys and 99.9% uh, .9 of them are men. And, and of course the women are the enablers and probably that 1% will also participate uh, in, in the uh, sexual abuse as a whole. In um, our group specifically, uh, the women were just as much, if not more abusive than the men sexually towards yeah. the children. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. And, and, and that's, you know, that, that enabling behavior and that violence of that sexual abuse uh, to a child and to a woman uh, is uh, unacceptable across the world. And just the, the, the mentality though, the mindset of, you know, these perpetrators where everything is about taking your identity away, just as you've said, right. And, and putting you into a, um, a modified, uh, secondary personality box for them. And, and all of it is about their fantasy process and, and how they can get the victim, you and others into this box that fits into that, uh, control mechanism. And so by taking all the things that you, you know, are dear to you, uh, and, you know, and then isolating you from the real world. So this little doll was, remained in my memory for 30 years. And as Amber and I reacquainted and started bringing everyone together to talk through this, we thought there would be kind of a fun little surprise for Amber. So let's just play that, Tyler, if we can. And Amber, you can talk to this after. Yeah. Okay. So we're doing this little video. This is for Mike King. He, what? he had a gift that he wanted to present to you. What? And asked us. Oh, to no way! Yes. Are you serious? 
know. <laughs> oh my gosh, I wasn't. I didn't even pay attention to what this was you were carrying around. I know. I didn't even have to come up with something to answer. Oh my gosh. That. Yes, she is famous for that. <laughs> Uh -uh. No way. No way, no way, no way. Oh. I have chills. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. It's just like her. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. She looks just exactly like her. Thank you. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's a letter from the woman that made it in there. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't even believe this. The dress is exactly like the. Oh my god. I like. Oh. Oh my god, this looks just exactly like her though. Like I've seen other rag dolls that have dark hair, but they don't have like this. This is like this Christmas kind of like a theme dress. It's exactly like how hers was. It's so unreal. Like I'm just like I'm shaking. I'm just so uh, Chris, there you go. Amber, would you uh, show them your little doll? Amber with love from somebody who loves you. Yep. And uh, <laughs> I thought there was something really special on the front as well. Yes, and on the front. And maybe you could talk about that. She's got her little heart. Oh, wow. Wow. And she's got the... She's exactly the same doll. <laughs> exactly the same doll. Um, Does she have a name? Found, her name is Christine Ann, which is like uh, Raggedy Ann, but different. <laughs> the okay. same, but different. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's, it's like a full circle. Um, you know, life is always going to end up okay. So, you know, it's also very symbolic of the things that were taken away from me, you know, as a child and in that group and in that cult from, you know, the abusers. And now I'm just, it's like taking back my life and being given a trophy for it. <laughs> so it feels good. You know, Chris, it was interesting. We, uh, Bonnie and I reached out to uh, the Raggedy Ann doll company and they um, have kind of gone out of business, but they found this wonderful woman named Lucille, who for 48 years has been making Raggedy Ann dolls. And when, Ra when Lucille heard Amber's story and read that um, remark from her diary, she uh, stepped up and made that doll for for Amber and and Amber, you know that we love you and and uh, I'm just so proud of you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so, so much. So what what has bringing all these kids together and going through this process the last four months, five months that we've been going through uh, meant to you? Um. It's been, it's been really um, surreal. I guess I say that word a lot because everything feels that way right now, but it, w it was just mostly healing. I felt like I was at home when I was around the other girls on the Zoom call, just talking with them. Um, banter back and forth was, was, you know, fun and snappy and I felt completely at home. Um, it was interesting to me to just, also see how the events of what happened to us affected each one of us in such different ways in certain areas and in other areas, you know, the way that we were affected, some was different, some was the same, just, yeah, it, it was a moment for sure. It was definitely one of those like magical moments because it doesn't happen every day that you get to 
speak with everybody that really mattered to you as as a kid because that you know the trauma and and the FBI raid and everything everything was you know dispersed after that thankfully <laughs> but and we're all still in contact too it was nice John came out here to visit and I went out to Utah and visited and saw saw her there and um, Laura and Andrea they were still friends and I'm saying all of their names and maybe I shouldn't but it, all of it it was great yeah you you also made a uh, surprise visit to the neighborhood. I did. And I got this amazing. I was in the mountains, Chris. I got this amazing uh, video <laughs> from these kids down, down harassing the old neighborhood. Tell them what that was yeah. like for you and how hard or how easy that was. It, it was so strange because when we were there, we were you know, to admire the homes and to admire the, the yards and everything had just like really fallen apart with age and time and the world didn't end and the homes are still there. And, uh, you know, there's a guy outside fixing his bike and life is going on. And it, it was a really big, I told you so I knew it. I knew that it, they weren't telling the truth, you know, and that, this wasn't the only place in the world that was going to stay ex uh, in existence is <laughs> that one small neighborhood in Utah. <laughs> wow. wow. So um, folks in this case, uh, we, we charged and convicted 12 adults uh, of those 12 adults that represented 757 rapes of children. And, uh, the uh, self-proclaimed leader of this group finally died in prison a few years ago. And Amber, what what was that like for you when that happened? Um, it really affected me when I found out that he had died because, you know, for many years I kept feeling like I had so much that I wanted to say to him, so much that I would say if ever, you know, given the opportunity because I never had a chance to confront him as an adult. and. Then after he died, it was it was too late. But you know, upon reflection, I realized just how much of a, a narcissistic person he was to begin with. Because he's not going to apologize to me. And from those that did visit with him, all he would say is like, "Well, the guards just think I'm so nice and that I shouldn't be here." And so the abusers, I think they just they keep abusing and, and keep believing their own lies. So. Him, him being gone, I, I don't. I did also feel a, a weird kind of a sadness, and I don't know what that was about either. But I, I felt like a a sadness of like, a, a now what? <laughs> you know, still kind of a feeling. We were all kind of waiting to see what would happen. And well, it, it uh, for for me was a defining moment in my career and changed the whole direction of my career. Um, but as uh, we've talked about, I never stopped thinking of Amber or the kids as I continue to call them and how rich my life is today because I get to talk to them and their wonderful husband, Amber, who put yeah. together this scheme with me to get you. And, uh, <laughs> and this, this beautiful mother has excelled with nightmares that no child should ever have to remember. And uh, we're going to have her back when we do the Zion Society podcast. And you and I are going to visit with her a lot. And while I talk about what we were doing in the investigation, she's going to be talking about what they were doing behind the scenes to beat us. And uh, <laughs> before you go there, before you go there, I have to know, what you're, I mean, you've got an acting career now and you're a comedian and you're living in LA. I got to know what you're doing. Come on, let's get to that too. You're, <laughs> I'm mostly just doing my husband. <laughs> okay. The, but, I'm, um, with her. I'm constantly working with her. Okay. The comedy shine. I'm got it. I'm only saying that because he just walked in and is shaking his head like, at some point, you're going to have to embarrass me. It's the it is the comedian in me. But no, I was doing a lot of stand up comedy before you know coronavirus hit, and uh, you know right now I've had a chance to really um, take a real good look and reflect on all of the things that have happened, and, and try to find ways that I can um, 
turn these things, you know, into it turn these magic moments that I'm getting, like with receiving this doll from Mike and find ways to be able to, you know, do it for somebody else because, yeah. and also to remember that it, how important it is also for the adults of abuse, because you're eight, when you turn 18, you're not in the system and you're very easily forgotten until you're back in the system or, or addicted to drugs or trying to survive in all of the wrong industries, you know, so it doesn't hurt yeah. to send an adult at all. And I just wanted to say thank you, Mike King, for sending me that. And, and I'm, I love it. I love having her here. Um, she has, you know, she has been, you know, doing this thing with me out here for, you know, quarantine. I have her sitting out by the pool. I have her sitting beside me painting. And, and you know, she's, my little companion again right now. So it's do you fun. sell do you sell your artwork and stuff that we can people could go and buy some of your artwork? I mean, we'd love to put that you know put it in the the deal below our YouTube channel. Or is there you have a YouTube yeah, channel? I what do. can we do for you? Yeah. How can we help you? I do have a YouTube channel, and it's okay. uh, Amber Dawn Lee. So if you just go okay. to YouTube and type in my name, something will come up. Okay. And another way is. Uh, my Instagram is Amber in the Valley. Okay. A M B E R I N T H E V A L L E Y. So that's the best way to reach me. I'm stumbling over my words right now because we've been in this quarantine for so long. I've stopped talking to people. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like out and about and talking to a lot of people, but I forget when I'm only talking to my dogs all day or my husband, how to like <laughs> speak. So what, what advice or what has worked for you to empower you to have to get to this place where you can talk about what you're doing. I, you remind me of, have you read the book, uh, A Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl? No. Okay. I Can I make a recommendation when you get a chance? Okay. Sure. All right. So that is a great book. It's called A Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And then there's a second book called The Choice. Okay. And just real fast, Viktor Frankl was a survivor of Auschwitz. Okay. And he talks about a, ther a therapy. He's a very, uh, very successful and very professional or a very um, renowned uh, psychologist. And he was writing the book when he was arrested. And the, he had the manuscript under his arm when he got off the train in Auschwitz and he was walking towards the officers. And as the officer turned him around, the manuscript fell out. And he came out of that whole experience up here, memorizing the entire book. And that is the book, A Man's Search for Meaning. Okay. Wow. I think you will find that book. I think you will relate to that book. And in so many ways, because I see reflecting from you, this incredible light of power. Okay. And this incredible gift that you have to give. To, to the world. I think people are, are absolutely gonna, gonna you know, say, I need to know what Amber is about. And so you, you keep going. I, I cannot wait to see some of the great things that are coming your way. And, uh, and uh, it, it's gonna be fun to see. It Thank really you. is. So a man's search for meaning. A Victor man's search for meaning, got a it. A man's search for meaning, okay, all right. Thank you. Now, Amber, I'm going to give I'm going to give you a chance to to say goodbye to everybody with anything that you think would be relevant. But I first want to preface it with, if you go to Amber's channel, it can sometimes get a little on the edge. So just remember that I'm giving you a little pre-notice. <laughs> I've counseled with her; she does not listen to me even today. <laughs> Thirty years have not made a difference in the. Uh, in that strong-willed personality that you see sitting in front of you. <laughs> Amber, anything you want to say to these wonderful people? Do you know there's almost, there were, there's uh, 1,500 people sitting on right now listening to you. Oh, wow. Okay, great. Hi. Um, just thanks for listening to the story and um, being a part of this show. It's really cool what you're doing, Mike. And, um, you know, <laughs> pardon me? 
No, I I thought oh, I about my name. I'm not important. I'm, I'm and I mean that. Yeah, Thank I am definitely a rebellious soul. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that I learned, you know, when I was in the group, you know, if it's if it's bad, do it. So. <laughs> you are going to be so fun to do a podcast with, and folks, we're going to be back. We're going to do the uh, Zion Society case after the book comes out. So probably around the first of the year, Amber will kick off. And uh, once the book's been on the shelves for a couple of months, we'll uh, go in and and uh, we'll invite you and the other kids on and we'll just talk through. We're going to have the police officers who were there on the day of the raid sharing some of the experiences they had. We're going to have um, folks that have an intimate knowledge of why certain things were happening. We're going to be talking about cult mentality and why people fall for this baloney and how easy it is to convince people to do something that is just so foreign to them. And like boiling the lobster, it has it doesn't happen at once. I mean, or by boiling the frog, I guess it is, where it's slowly turning up the heat until people are buying off on this thing. But the difference was you and 31 other children didn't have a choice. You were forced, you were victimized, and you were compelled yeah. And it took a lifetime for you to work through those things. And I just will never, ever stop loving you and, and thinking about you kids. And I just look forward to when we do this again. Yeah. Thank so you thanks so much. much. Thank Have you a good night, Amber. Watching it also. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you.